right, so I opened up my shot 20. Uh, I have moved the nodes from the subnetwork. So we had the subnetwork here with shot 20. I just moved them out of here. So now we have them here. Um, so this is all set up correctly. Shot 20, make sure to that this all is correct. Uh, you can see that we are missing the caches and that's because of course our dollar job is still set to uh, well is set to this location now and we have caches with our dollar job which is now referring to a location of our current shot which doesn't have the cache if we want we can still check the other one uh, by typing a file and then put something like dollar root and from dollar root uh so dollar root slash all right you can go to the Project, right? Uh, Houdini Animatic, Geo, Caramel Sim. I, oh, I didn't use the dollar root here. Well, it doesn't matter for now, but um, you can see we can still load it there. Uh, let me just put this to dollar root, right? And then to. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, like that. All right. So you can see with the dollar root we can sort of refer back to it so but we're gonna cache it again uh, but before we do that we need to do some other important stuff because remember we have this cookie here which uh well we don't really have a cookie right now because we were loading it remember from the original shot before but what we had now is we had it saved out right as a mesh so let's put make a file let's type dollar root slash assets Go there, do models, cookie bar, one, cookie bar. Right. So now we have our cookie bar loaded. And now we need to make sure that, so let's just remove that cache. Just change our animation a little bit because the shape or the size of our cookie bar changed a little bit. So we probably need to change some of our animation as well. Uh, so if you're just going to look at this thing. So you can see our position of our cookie bar probably needs to change a little bit. Because of the size changed. Uh, so let me just move it over a little bit. Something like that. Let's just look through the camera. Uh, something like that should probably work. Right. So now let's just go in here. Make sure that this is set to into this object. And then we need to load this cookie. Right. So now we have the cookie in our flip here. All right. So. Now let's, uh, all right, let me just make a new camera and then zero the camera out. So we have something to go back to if we want to completely reset our view. All right. So uh, let's check this. Let's template the cookie and let's see how it moves along it. So it needs to probably start in a different spot. So it probably needs to start a little bit over here. Rip, let's keyframe it. And end location seems to be fine. But again, we changed the size of the overall bar a little bit. So that's why it's not completely matching. That's that's fine. Uh, it needs to be a little bit thinner as well. Because we don't want it to go over the edges. So let's just make it a little bit smaller. Something like that. And with our original thing that I already deleted. But uh, it was like drooping over the edges quite a bit. Which we probably don't want. So we probably want to increase the viscosity here. Maybe 3600. Like three times as high. Maybe let's increase the resolution. Of the flip already. A little bit. Before we cache it out. So something like 0 0.2. Uh, let's check everything. If everything is still okay. This 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 shot should be pretty straightforward. Um, because it's. Like the animatic shot that we had. Was already somewhat like we we're gonna have it uh just we need to tweak the parameters from the simulation a little bit to have this nice sort of um, effect where it's sort of like um, what do you call it like folding upon itself kind of so we need higher viscosity and all of that other stuff but so i guess just with let's just move our bounding box a little bit as well all right and we probably need let me just check the camera this probably needs to start a little bit higher as well so i guess let's remove the y component and let's just move it up a little bit Rip. 
Uh, let's just cache this, see what, it, see what comes out. So we have an actual cache to work with before we uh, do some other stuff. So I'm just going to press cache uh, boop, and then I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it finished caching. Let's just have a look at what we have. Let me just go to our other camera. And zoom out a little bit. So what are we doing? Let's show our cookie. Right. So let's just play through it. Um, well, it's already doing the folding upon itself, but it's still, <laughs> it's drooping over the side here. Okay, so a couple of things. It's probably too thick. So I want this to be a little bit less thick. I want it to start a little bit to the right here, I guess, because it's not covering this part. Uh, it needs to stop a little bit earlier. Uh, viscosity needs to probably be a little bit higher. Because I don't want it to droop over the size as much. Probably want it to be a little bit thinner as well. Let's just implement all these things. Again, like if you're working, probably keep a notepad handy or something. It's always nice to write, just write stuff down on paper. When you're doing stuff like this, just to have it sort of in front of you. Like if your director gives you some notes of your art director. Like, oh, uh, can you change this? Can you change this? It's just nice to have it in front of you when you're like working. Uh, right, so this needs to... Start a little bit over here, keyframe it. It needs to stop emitting a little bit sooner, like I mentioned, because this part will droop over itself. So probably needs to stop, let's just go in there. Let's just say stop emitting after uh, frame 100. Uh, let's change this animation here to be linear let's increase the viscosity even more let's say over 9000 uh all right and uh, let's just have a go at it again and again like we're doing super pretty low resolution sims for now once we're happy with it we'll do a higher res but oh and another thing which i almost forgot like i mentioned it's good to, to sort of write things down let's make this a lot smaller because we don't want it to be as thick. So probably something like this is probably good. All right, so let's just save it out and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, so let's just go through it. Um, so the viscosity seems nice. It is a little bit too far over to the left and it actually stops emitting a little bit too early now. Um, so I'm just going to change some stuff again. Um, and I'll just... I'll just change some stuff. I won't record all my steps. I'll just report back when all of everything's looking good. Again, you can just do the same. Just play around with it. You don't have to exactly match everything I'm doing. Uh, I mean, you're an artist, right? So you should uh, just like play around yourself and see what looks good. So I'm just going to change a little bit and I'll report back when it's looking good. All right. So I changed some stuff. Uh, it's not perfect, but... I think for this shot should be fine. Uh, I do need to do a high resolution sim. So what I did is I've changed the viscosity. I changed the final, uh, the frame when it emits. So it's uh, one seven. Uh, I seem to have a little bit higher resolution. So let's just look to our camera as well to see how this looks. So let me just look at with the particle fluid surface. Let's just see what this looks like. You can see it really has this stepping. That's because we really need to start cranking up our resolution, uh, our um, sub steps and all that stuff. But we'll do that once we're happy with what this looks like. But I think, like, I really like how it's now moving sort of through the camera. That's also what I had in my original. So with this, let's just export another flipbook. And if I, yeah, I have this thing here. So let me just put this to objects. Let's do it to the proper shot. Let's put force objects to cookie and flip. All right. And yeah, let's just run a flipbook for this. Let's head, put it in our animatic and just see if we like the sort of the rough timing of this. And if we do, then we can fire up a much higher resolution sim uh, to sort of get rid of the weird look that we have right now. Because again, like this is just because we like we don't we lose completely lose definition of all of this stuff, and we do want want to keep that also for the later shot. Like I just just looks nicer. 
Um, so yeah, we need to fix all of that, but I'll go into that once we have the higher resolution sim, because else we cannot even do proper meshing. So let's just generate a flipbook. Like that. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put it in the edit and then we'll have a quick look at the edit. And then we'll do the higher resolution sim if this all ends up looking good in the edit. All right, so we're in the edit here. Uh, it works, works quite well. We have uh, this thing going on. I mean, I could probably mention some things that I don't really like. Like I still might be a little bit too thick. Um, timing might be a little bit different but I'll like I'll leave that up to you to sort of keep tweaking this the way you want it to tweak kind of um like I mentioned it's impossible to get to exactly the same level with the like like an original thing because this is just like if you're gonna do something production level you're gonna go to a lot of iterations uh, and you're just gonna keep working on your iterations and like I mentioned I don't want to show you all of the iterations I'm going to go through because like all of these shots went through a whole bunch of iterations. So for the for the course now, I think this should be uh, for this part fine. We're going to now going to do a much higher resolution sim on this. Uh, so we're going to back go back into Houdini. So in terms of timing, this is fine. Um, I'm going to do a much higher resolution sim. Then we're going to show you some tips and tricks to get the meshing to look better as well because we want it to look nice and smooth so like you like caramo like it needs to, like the main thing with a commercial like this is like you need to get hungry when you're watching it because you want to be able to like you want they want you to be to to buy, go out and buy this this candy bar um so yeah let's just jump jump back into Dini. let's fire up a higher resolution sim uh, and let's talk a lot a little bit about the meshing Right, so let's just put this to manual and let's just re crank up this. So, a uh, couple of things that we probably want to do is let's turn up the sub steps, I guess, a little bit. Let's do two and three uh, to kind of get rid a little bit of the stepping because the more it's gonna, like, with sub steps, it's gonna. Okay, so if you have one st let me just explain if you don't understand what, what sub-steps are. Uh, it's essentially, if you only have one sub-step, it means it will emit something on every frame. It will solve everything on every frame. But it won't solve it in between frames. So if I have frame 93, 94, it's not going to do anything in between those frames. But if you increase your sub-step, it's also going to do calculations in between those frames. So it's going to be more accurate. So uh, that might help getting a little bit rid of Maybe like the stepping. Um, and also, of course, we need to really increase the resolution to get rid of the stepping. So let's just dive in there. So increase that. And th this is going to really slow down it, slow it down. Because if it's ever if going from one to two to two, three, this will make it about twice as slow. And then we're going to also really. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna increase the resolution because if we're gonna middle click on this thing, we're now we're dealing with about half a million points, which is quite low. I think my final sim was about twelve million. I'm not sure. Maybe it was less. You don't need to go that overboard with something like this, but the main thing is that we just need to be able to get a nice smooth shape from this because we really can't afford to have it look jittery like this. So that's the main thing. And I mean, aside from that, we're not doing anything crazy. It just needs to troop over itself. Um, so yeah, let's, I guess, make this 06. Let's just try that. Just going to press escape. Just going to catch that. And then we're going to see what it looks like. Oh, something, by the way, that I almost forgot to mention. Uh, so I ran my sim. Uh, I actually canceled it. And I did a slightly uh, lower res with a uh, division size of 0 0.01. But I want to point something out before we kind of continue. I almost forgot to <laughs> include this. Uh, we probably want to compress this cache because this is going to get quite heavy. Um, so if I middle click on this, it's here, not too bad. It's 26.24 megabytes for a frame. Uh, but you also actually have a compress, uh, fluid compress. So what I can do, so I put that in. It's going to, well, 
cannot really see it because it's now indicating uh, 17.80 kilobytes. Uh, I'm not sure if that's completely accurate, but you can do this before your cache and then this can also go into the fluid surface and that can actually also just be meshed. So this will just do away with a lot of uh, attributes. So you can actually just remove attributes that you don't really care for. So I guess we could remove even more because we don't really care in our case for keeping, oh, keeping density. We don't care. We don't care for divergence. We don't care for forsticity. We don't care for the rest. In this case, this is going to be important when we do the chocolate. So we do care for that later on. Um, and what we need to do is we need to also change the particle separation here to match our particle separation of our sim. It's going to make it a little bit bigger. So you can see it does make it bigger, but it's still, uh, it's going to really keep the caches a lot smaller. So uh, almost forgot leaving that out, but this is going to be quite important if you're dealing with heavy flip caches. So I'm just going to put this before the cache here. And now I'm going to run a, a cache at... What, are, what did I put it at? At 0 0.008. I put it at 0 0.006 before. That was quite slow. I think if I'm having a look at what my cache looks like with the... Just see if it wants to load. Yeah, so if I'm having a look at what the cache looks like with just the um, uh, point, uh, what, zero 0.01. It was already quite okay. So I think with 0.008, I think I should be good. Um, remember, this is exponential. So if you go down lower, it's going to get exponentially um, slower. It's kind of like if you have a box. And to just sort of demonstrate what I mean. So if I have a box here with a couple of divisions. And then I put a subdivide. So let's put it to bilinear. So this is also going to be exponential. This is not, uh, so it's kind of like if I go from division size 1 to 0 0.5, it's going to do this. If I then go to from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25, it's going to, it's going to sort of exponentially add on it. So we go from 56 points to, uh, oh, sorry, from 56 points to 866 to 3000 something something. To well, you can see it's it's exponential. That's the same with like this division size. So if you have it, you're gonna have a whole bunch of extra stuff. So you need to be careful when you're doing that. Anyway, let me just cache this out at 0 0.008, and then um, and I'll report back when it's done. All right, so it finished caching. Uh, you can see if we scrub through this. This looks a little bit weird. It's because of the compressed cache. Like that does that always looks weird in a few parts. So you don't really. Just look where it. Uh, final cache here is about 2.83 gigabytes. Like if we didn't compress it, probably would have been a couple of uh, gigabytes bigger. So if we just have a look at this, we can actually unpack this. To have a look at the points if we want. So you can just scrub through this and you can see we have our sim. You can see we still have a little bit of this, this um, stepping going on. So if we look at our surface here, you can see it's also still there, but this is where some meshing settings can come in. Uh, so there's actually a whole bunch of stuff you can do in this particle fluid surface. Actually this particle fluid surface, uh, if you go in here, does a whole bunch of stuff like with VDBs. So it's essentially, you can also just do it yourself with VDBs, but this is, has a whole bunch of the tools built in. Um, so yeah, we can, play around with how this looks. So a lot of the, well, things that we can change is with filtering. Uh, we have stuff with the droplet scale, like for example, if we increase the droplet scale, you can see that's kind of changing the P scale on these things. You can also change the influence radius, which is essentially, um, if you have a point, like it's gonna look around itself to sort of have a look at like, okay, where should I, look for for other points but uh, we're not gonna get that much of a sort of uh 
difference in the stepping with the, just those fingers uh, things uh probably need to look at this smoothing so let's just um so in the filtering so let's just put uh up smooth uh road dilate and final smooth so these are just filtering method so essentially i think what they're just using is vdb like reshape vdb smooth like all of the stuff that we were using before as well so i guess if i would look through this it's going to do vdb reshape road dialect you can see all these things that we've already used before and probably what we just need to do is change the smooth here a little bit as you can see it smooths it out finals so um i'm not completely sure what the order is with these things but like smooth here we'll just do smooth then it's gonna do erode and dilate which is the reshape type things that we did before so if i for example output a uh surface vdb here so we have vdb reshape for example then we, yeah like you have these options to dilate to erode all of that, those things so it's gonna essentially go to filtering it's gonna dilate, smooth, then erode, and then final smooth is after the entire process is finished. At least I think that's how it's going in here. We can double check if we want. Um, we should have a VDB for particles. Uh, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Combine mask of smooth mask. Right, so yeah, dilate, smooth, VDB erode, final smooth. You can see that that's the order. So final smooth happens after the inf after the entire thing. So essentially it's dilating, so shrinking, smoothing it, uh, or, or dilating is expanding it, sorry, smoothing it, then eroding it again, because uh, smoothing will sort of shrink it back in. Then it's gonna erode it again. So we're kind of left with sort of the same shape, but then smooth, smooth out, and then final smooth will sort of smooth the entire thing back out. Um, hopefully that sort of makes sense. Um, so let's just output this again as a polygon. So we don't want to use polygon soup. We want to use surface polygons. It's a little bit larger in size, but I think we're going to render with Redshift and Redshift kind of prefers surface polygons. Sorry. Um, so yeah, just change these things. So final smooth, probably want to do something like that. Depending on how sharp you want like your faults here to be. Uh, I initially had something that was like quite sharp. So you kind of want to want to play maybe with these settings. Like I could, for example, make the droplet size here a little bit smaller then change the, fill, the smoothing here and you get like sharper, sharper edges. But then we have the stepping again. So it's really up to you to kind of play around with these settings. But I kind of hope that you sort of understand what they do. Uh, and like the filtering is a very important step in making your uh your mesh look good and also influence radiance and droplet scale is very important when you're meshing to get rid of something like for example flicker because if we have a a point here uh and we want to mesh it and there's like something pretty close here then it's going to grab onto that and it's going to make a mesh in between but maybe those need to be separate surfaces so in that case uh you want to have the influence radius be lower but I don't think it'll be that big of a problem here. I guess we can probably see it if we step through this. So it's, yeah, once it's gonna, yeah, okay. So in our case, it's moving fast enough that we don't really notice that much, but you can see once it folds up and up on itself, it sort of blends this together. And if we, for example, had the point scale smaller, 0.3, you can see we can really, get this sharpness back in and like if you really want this to be like completely sharp and whatever then you would need to really do a much higher resolution sim and work with your filtering settings and like this is just stuff that you really just need to play around with to just sort of figure out what looks good but i think something like this will probably um something like this will probably do fine maybe there's still a little bit too much Stepping over there, so I think maybe 
I'm just gonna cash it out like this. Uh, just keep working on it how you want. But let's make another file cache. Because we kind of want to mesh this out. Because you can see it takes a couple of seconds to cook. Something like this. Depending on your system as well. I have quite a fast CPU. I have a Threadripper 3970X. So over here that's going to be quite fast. But if you have a slower machine. This might also take quite a long time. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to cache this out. So let's just match the... Start an end frame, copy parameter, paste right to references, caramel mesh, something like that. And let's just, I guess, save it out, save the disk. All right, so we finished caching. Um, this, I think, looks, looks pretty good. This is uh, pretty similar to what I had with my original. Maybe, like, there's... Of course, always going to be some stuff that you can keep tweaking, but it's kind of, I like how it sort of droops into the cookie here. That's also what I had in my original. Uh, and it looks pretty stable. You can see how much uh, difference the filtering makes. You can see sort of what I mean here with the radius. Uh, like if you were to go much, like a little bit higher resolution, more sub steps, and you could probably get rid of this thing that's going on here where it's sort of grabbing together. But I think. For our uses here, this looks fine. Uh, we have proper velocity on our thing as well. So yeah, I'd say looks pretty good. Let's override our flipbook, see how it looks in the edit. So I'm just gonna delete from disk and just flipbook this out. Then we're gonna check this inside the edit. And then if that's looking good, uh, yeah, we could move along with our next shot. Uh, Cause again, all of the lighting shading, we're gonna do that in the later chapter when we already have all of the uh, simulations done so just gonna move along uh, to the next shot if this is looking good all right so I'm thinking I uh, think it looks pretty good we need to tweak the timing a little bit but oh uh, no it goes through the thing uh, but like in general I think it looks pretty good now we have two shots here so I'd say pretty good. Um, so let's move along to the next one. Like, I mean, we can have a look at the sequence. So, yeah, uh, I'd say move along to this one. So where the chocolate troops over it. Um, and yeah, then we'll just, let's just move, move ahead. 